Um, okay. All right, we're live for our final panel of Yeah, 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 Nordic Wired. Um, so I'm just gonna, before the panel gets underway, I just wanted to pop in and say thank you very, very much to everybody that's attended over the last two days. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it and we hope that you've been able to find your way around the platform and that you've made some new friends and some new contacts. Um, we'd love to hear what your thoughts about everything were. Um, I will jump in at the end of the session just to let you know how you can access all of these panels and everything, all the information in the future. Um, but before it, this panel kicks off, I just want to welcome everyone to join us in the Ya 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 Bar at the end of this session, which you can find in the sessions button, which is in the, on the left hand side of your screen. Um, so please do come along and say hello. Um, but for now, I'm going to pass over to Anna, who will introduce our final panel of the day. Thank you so much, Francine, and welcome, everyone. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, if you guys have any questions, uh, make sure to just pop them in the chat and uh, we'll get to them. Um, I guess I'll just kick it off. My name is Anna Dunkel. I'm originally from Iceland, but I've been living in uh, Germany for uh, over six years. Uh, and I work for an agency called Better Things, which is a, a music PR agency, but um, I'm head of a department called Better Independent, where we have a podcast and a lot of knowledge sessions. And the idea is kind of just to give information to artists who are starting out uh, and also looking to tackle the German market. Um, I'd love for my, the rest of my panelists to introduce themselves. Sylvia, if you could start. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm 34 years old. I live in Berlin and I've been a music journalist for, I think, the last 15 years. And I think around like 10 years ago, uh, I actually started living off writing. So it worked out quite well. The market is changing right now, but I think everyone can keep up. And yeah, I'm writing for uh, bigger um, uh, music uh, magazines in uh, Germany, but also for small blogs. So I think my range is quite wide. And uh, yeah, that's me. Can you name some of the blogs that you've been working or writing for? Yeah, sure. Um, Nothing But Hope and Passion is one of them. Bedroom Disco, those are the blogs. Then Musik Express, which is one of the biggest music magazines in Germany. But I also do for your tone work. This is the cultural stuff for the bigger magazines like Zeit Online. So yeah, that is, that's other ones that I write for. Thanks so much, Sylvie. Anton, on to you. Uh, hi, my name is Anton Teichmann. I'm also based in Berlin. Um, so I do two things mainly. One thing is uh, I run a small independent label called Mansions and Millions that I started around five years ago, focusing a lot on Berlin-based musicians. And then also I'm an artist manager just this year, I started a management agency called AOK, um, where I yeah, manage a few different acts. And most of the artists that I work with are, I guess, like independent pop artists. So none of them are huge, but um, most of them play internationally. And um, But obviously, Germany is a very important market for us as well. Thanks so much, Anton. Uh, and you, Karen? Hi, um, my name is Karen Norback. I'm at the minute in Norway. I am Norwegian originally, and I moved to Berlin two years ago. Um, I also kind of split my career a little bit. So on one side, I do management for a German act called Digitalism. And then I also now a &R for Colombia in Germany. Uh, and I focus mostly on international artists that kind of have a potential either to come into Germany or acts that want to go out. So yeah, that's a bit of my expertise. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So I think the main reason why people are interested in this uh, panel is, um, I mean, Germany is a huge music market. It's the, surpassed the UK now recently. So it is now Europe's biggest music market and the world's third biggest after the US and Japan. Um, and so we fully understand artists who want to kind of try to break into here. Um, 
Karen, maybe you could uh, talk a little bit about, you know, when Nordic artists is considering to approach Germany, what do you feel is the biggest difference between the Nordic countries and Germany? As in, is, is there a cultural or approach differences or difference in the industry? I mean, I think there's definitely a big culture difference, but I think the biggest win or possibility that a Nordic artist have coming into Germany is just kind of the vast landscape of the industry. It's, uh, it's, it has so like a uh, way more varied radio landscape and several more media outlets. And I think it of course depends on the genre, but there's just a bit um, more possibility, I would say, uh, because if you don't necessarily find your target on one end, you still have a hundred others you can try to hit. Um, and I think coming from the Nordics, I'm just seeing that it's a place where you can take some risks and really like uh, explore, which is very interesting. Amazing. Anton, I know you've worked with some Scandinavian artists before. Do you feel like there's a difference in approach between German artists and Nordic artists? Um, in, in which regards do you mean? In, in like uh, their attitude or approach to the industry or maybe how they how people work, how the industries function? Yeah, I guess um, a lot of it was already said in the in the keynote. So Germany is it's a very big country, a lot of people living there and a lot of I guess big cities, so it's less centralized than than other markets. So I think the interesting thing about Germany is that you can have uh, multiple approaches. I don't think there's like one one plan that you have to follow in order to be successful. There's like different ways and um, different audiences, and um, I think that makes things quite interesting. Whereas in some other countries is where if you're not able to to break into like the biggest city, then you can more or less forget about that market. I think in Germany, things could be a bit different sometimes. Definitely. I, I know artists who have managed to tour Germany several times who have just started to skip Berlin, for example, because they've managed uh, to, you know, especially in the Southwest, there's so many smaller cities. They're more for looking for the university. They're like a rock band from the UK. And they just decided, like, yeah, actually, we do much better <laughs> if we skip uh, Berlin. I also know that with the Nordics, um, as you were saying, there's there's definitely a harder time if you have one uh, maybe radio DJ who doesn't like you, who is in charge of the you know national radio, uh, which we have a lot more in the Nordics, um, that can make or break you almost. While here in Germany, as was said in the keynote, it's a lot more spread out and diversified and and more localized. Do you have anything you would like to add to that, Sylvie? Um, actually, I would say the same. It's it's so much about like I know the scene in Cologne is so different from the scene in Munich, or, or what else? What else is really important is like the, all those small clubs in in different cities. They are so interesting, and they have sometimes such good people who just like do the whole um, uh, booking. And people just come there, they don't even know the bands, but they know the guy who's in charge, who knows good music, and they just go there. I mean, not right now, of course, but things mm -hmm. are going to change. And they just go there and, 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 and uh, um, watch bands play. So yeah, that's a really important thing to do, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think but it'll be interesting because uh, I'm expecting the majority of the people listening are from the Nordics. Um, it's very interesting to look at how Germany is different in the sense of how uh, Germans consume music. It's a lot, I mean, radio and TV are huge, I mean, basically in all the Western countries, but uh, Germans aren't nearly as uh, avid streaming uh, users, as was mentioned in the keynote before. Um, where would do, where do you feel that people are discovering music um, these days? Do you think it's um, good to, is, is there a certain platform that you guys feel that, uh, uh, artists should be um, approaching more than another. Maybe Sylvie, you can speak on that. Um, well, the statistics show that um, through uh, everything that algorithms show you, that the most of people discover music through that, uh, which actually kind of sucks because um, then the algorithm always like tries to keep people in there and not show them really new stuff or completely different stuff. But on the other hand, you have a good chance of being listened to when you are in one of those playlists or in the algorithms of, for example, Spotify. Um, but I think um, this uh, is, 
I think that people who are really like looking for music or really love music would go a bit further and look uh, maybe in other platforms or try to find music somewhere else. So I guess um, what right now is uh, quite hot is, or was for a while is uh, SoundCloud because you can just like approach it differently there and really more diverse. So I think this is uh, something that uh, one should consider. Um, and also um, from my end, at least, I really uh, like to discover music on Instagram. <laughs> Okay, that's good to know. And Anton, uh, when you're working with artists you're uh, managing, where do you feel like uh, the industry side, where do you th are they looking for new music? I mean, of course, bookers aren't very busy these days, but, you know, labels or any kind of partnerships or radios, um, where, where are they discovering their new music? Um, yeah, I mean, we obviously also listen to uh, to playlists, and um, I think uh, both on the industry and on the consumer side, I think word of mouth is still quite important. I think it's uh, you want to know what your friends that you trust are listening to. Um, it also, um, the obviously the the industry events are very important. I think it is important to play Reeperbahn Festival or CO Pop yeah. um, in order also to be recognized by um, the industry. Um, but I mean, yeah, the the industry also obviously follow similar channels. Like they wanna they wanna see how people are doing on social media. They wanna see if people have already been talking about them and all these things. Yeah. Mm, definitely. Um, if we move on maybe a little bit more to Karen, you've been working as an A&R. Um, where do you feel like that artists that are coming, especially in from the Nordics in Germany, do you feel like there's a difference between how um, artists should approach the industry? You know, is there a different uh, way of doing it or is there just something that you know that has worked really well that you'd like to recommend? I mean, I think it's so different from project to project. And I think obviously not being able to play live this year has been hard for a lot of people and especially newcomers and developing acts. But I think I think it's still about kind of trying to get that personal connection to the people you want to work with and just keep in mind what you actually want. I think a lot of people are reaching out to uh, German labels now because there's kind of this history of now like us being able to break a few things from this territory. And I think it's just important to keep in mind that it's always hard for everyone and kind of think about, I mean, since Germany is such a radio driven market, that's going to be an important kind of uh, target for a label of course, depending on if it's a small indie or like a bigger major. Um, so I think I think it's just about making the best music you can, but keeping in mind that in Germany, we're probably going to want you to be able to go to radio and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't think that like Anton said earlier, there's no right or wrong way. But mm. yeah, just being realistic about the market, I think is important. Yeah, and grabbing what you were saying about, of course, uh, not being able to play live shows this year is really, of course, detrimental. Um, have you guys seen any interesting or ways that uh, artists have been able to get the attention of the industry uh, without um, without the live scene? You know, um, is there is live streaming actually working? Have, do you know any good examples of that, or some other ways that artists have been able to kind of approach the industry this year? Anton, maybe you can start with that. Yeah, tough question. I'm still trying to figure this out myself. Um, I'm. I think live streams are very necessary, but I personally still struggle with them because there is. I think we all know this. Such a massive overload of of live streams that, you know, the moment you go to a show, you're kind of stuck there. You and you you're able to enjoy the show with the live stream. You can like turn it off any second, listen to something else. Um, so um. I'm still waiting for strategies to approach this more more clearly. I think there have been some good examples. Um, one thing that I have been thinking about a lot uh, is um, there's one maybe a bit of an upside to the the current situation is that in some regards it's a bit of an equalizer when it comes to, for example, PR campaigns. 
Um, use, usually, if you were to do interviews with a local radio station, for example, like they expected you to like actually play a show or a local newspaper to write about uh, the artist, usually in connection with the live show. Now that nobody basically can play live, you can still have a PR campaign in Germany without really being present in all of the different cities. So I think that's one thing that uh, that's maybe a bit different uh, right now than it would be like a year ago. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cedric, do you agree with that? Well, I think it is an equalizer, but um, at the same point, I'm, there's so much in meeting a person uh, like live. And if I have to write an article, or if I, even if I love a band very much and I want to write an article, it's when they're a newcomer, there's just two ways. One way would be just for a small blog, which is great and fun but I'm getting paid from newspapers and they would do it if the story is really unique or if the artist is really important. So a unique story doesn't come from 10 minutes Skyping and not with 20 minutes, it, it has to be a bit more and it's really hard sometimes to find the story then and um, to have this like, I don't know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's logic, it's not, not news that I, I'm uh, telling you guys, but it's just like uh, there's a different approach to something or to write an article or a text or even to go dive into it. So, yeah, I mean, it, it is, we can make it work, but um, I, I don't think that it's uh, so ideal right now. And, but I think like uh, approaching the industry, I don't know about, but approaching um, an audience in these times, I think in the summer there were so many good, uh, I mean, it was summer, but there were so many good ideas of playing live, like the car uh, concerts or the picnic concerts where you have to s stay on your little blanket or stuff like that, where you could actually enjoy live music, but maybe behave yourself and not go totally out there. But it was still nice and you could have this live experience then. Well, you're saying uh, when artists are um, approaching you, you need to have a good story to actually write about them. Uh, do you have any tips uh, for what um, journalists are in general looking for, or at least you, what are you looking for when you're writing a story about a newcomer? Um, uh, yeah, I, I think I will uh, repeat myself from our last talk that we had. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really important to do it quick and like use tags and really buzzwords. Do it small, do it approachable, send the link with, with the music with you. Don't, don't do like long texts. And if there is a story that doesn't have to be, don't make up something that's not there, be authentical. But if there is something, describe it in two or three sentences and that's that. And then, yes. because I, like I said, like uh, music journalists are looking for new music. They want to discover it. Yeah, Sylvia and I had a panel a couple of months ago where we were talking about very, something very similar. And Sylvia made the very good point that almost everyone agreed that, you know, when you're approaching a journalist, make sure to keep it short and sweet, get to the point. If they want more information, they will follow up and ask for it. Um, um, just to get a little bit more like, you know, practical and the tips that we're giving people here, um, are there any specific um, blogs or places that you guys would recommend up and coming artists to approach? Maybe Sylvie, you can also take that or Karen? Yeah, I can jump in a little bit. I think uh, the landscape right now or this year has been quite hard to kind of uh, penetrate. There's not as many as there maybe was like five years ago. Um, but I think there's still like a few main ones that I read a lot, like Pigeon and Planes. Um, I think also a lot of something I thought about from the earlier question about where do people find music these days, I think also just moving from the Nordics um, and coming to Germany, I've also seen that YouTube is so important here. Um, and I think just being able to kind of show something visual also around your musical expression is really important. So I think it doesn't necessarily have to come from a certain blog, but I think it just needs to be a bit eye catching and tell a story short and sweet, uh, kind of, uh, in the same way that you would in text. Um, yeah, that's a bit abstract, but <laughs> yeah. What I can add is like uh, there there are different approaches also with different genres. In uh, Germany, for example, we have in the, the uh, quite big or 
yeah, we have quite a big uh, hip hop scene, and there are certain rules there. There's, for example, there are a few podcasters that are doing a really good job talking about hip hop and politics, or about hip hop and music, and then you have a few influencers there that will play new music and they have really really uh, famous and very important uh, playlists on for example spotify uh, where they always uh, where you can always discover new music so i think it's it it, it dip also depends on the genre that you want to be in or that you want to be seen in definitely anton do you have anything to add no i think most of it has been said uh, yeah the media landscape is definitely changing like it is uh, i guess everywhere else um so I also I think like I enjoy reading stuff like a well researched uh, article or really nice interview. I personally really enjoy it, but I think the reality is that a lot of people discover music now on other channels mainly, um, w which then from the artist perspective means that um, you can find an audience also without like a classic maybe music PR campaign. But for certain areas, genres, it still makes sense, and and there's this, there are just uh, outlets left. So yeah, definitely. And if we like, if I just pitch in here a little, like more practical stuff. If artists are looking to get in touch with blogs and uh, and Spotify playlisters, Submit Hub is a great resource here in Germany. I know it is an international platform, but it's very very uh, useful here in Germany, and that's basically just an online platform. Uh, where that you can join for free, but then uh, you basically to pitch your music to a blog or um, playlist, uh, you pay. Uh, you have basically buy some uh, some um, online credits uh, through Submit Hub, and then you use those credits to pay. And there's you pay maybe one to five euros per submission, and then you are guaranteed that someone listens to your music. They give you how much time they need to listen to it. Um, and then you at least you're guaranteed a response. You're not guaranteed a feature. You're not even guaranteed an um, in-depth response. But at least you know that you're going to get something back. So even if you have a small budget, um, just throwing 50 euros in there, it might be able to at least get you one or two features. So that's uh, my practical tip. Uh, also, if I jump in with blogs and things, I mean, nothing but hope and passion, uh, Diffus, Music Express. I mean, of course, you need to have something to really... Uh, interest uh, these people noise of course uh, you need to have something to interest you and what I've mostly heard from journalists in Germany is that very often if you want to get a feature it is very good like also what Silvia was saying you want to have a um, an approach that has something to do with what's going on in the culture so if there's a cultural something going on like for example the summer when everyone was talking about Black Lives Matter, to have some kind of angle on this aspect is not uh, is, is often a good way to get people to want to feature you. Um, um, also, sometimes it's maybe good to filter also if you want to be in a magazine or somewhere, something like that, to maybe just like uh, check out what the topics are or the main topics and whether you're, you're fitting to that. You don't have to write to every, uh, each and every magazine, but maybe there's something that has uh, their heart beating on the same track that yours is, then maybe it's a perfect fit and you could just like get into there really easily. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, I did ask this question, it's funny when Sylvia is here because I feel like we're, we're talking about the same subject, but uh, um, I definitely get the feeling, um, as I say, I've been uh, in Germany for six and a half years and especially before then and around that time when I was coming here, um, if I may use the crass language, Germany had a real boner for the Nordics. Like it was really cool to be Scandinavian. Um, but I feel like there's a little bit more now artists, of course, if they're Scandinavian, they can have a lot of success, but I feel like artists need to do a more than just rely on the Scandinavian angle. Um, is this something Karen that you've been feeling as well? Yeah. And I think it's maybe because the market in Germany is still able to be physical it's still it's not as uh, determined on just dsps and i think also in i mean even in germany you also have like amazon is a huge player there um so i think yeah it's it's not enough anymore i think maybe it just needs to i think it's still something we're drawn to because i think germans really appreciate 
uh, like good craftsmanship and also like special voices. And I think that's something the Nordic market has been like good at developing the last few years. But I definitely know that on my top agenda, um, it's really important uh, to not just sign Nordic pop because it doesn't necessarily work that well in in the radio landscape. So I think, yeah, it's a bit of, um, I think it's more challenging now, but also because you have that huge domestic rap scene that's so prominent and it's the same in every Nordic country. So I think the, there's just less slots maybe. Anton, I see you nodding. I can't, I can't add much more here. I think yeah, Germany has become so much more domestic over the last like 10, 15 years uh, that um, you're not you're not dependent on uh, on like having too many international artists to like fill your program here, like that uh, might have used to be the case. So. And that, yeah, as Karen said, that leaves less room maybe for international artists than than uh, before. Or maybe it's so, even more diverse now, or maybe more open, because now you have also a really interesting artist, maybe from Czech or from Luxembourg or from France and stuff like that. So maybe there's like more. And also what I would like, this is just a feeling. I don't know if it's really true, but I have the feeling that this typical Nordic sound, it doesn't exist like that anymore, whether it ever exists, I don't know. But right now it's just like, because before it was always like this really, uh, electro pop, easy, really coldish sound that was quite cool. Um, I think right now the the scene in in the um, in, in Norway or Sweden is also changing so much, and it's also more diverse. But like I said, just a feeling. I don't know whether this is true. So it's it's like not a selling point anymore because it's not that easy to describe when you just say not not Nordic pop. Yeah, I think that's a good point, and I mean also seeing just maybe the last three years of Bilam has been more diverse. And I think also um, us as, or like the Nordic market also has been more and more domestic. So I think, yeah, like Silvia says, maybe there's not as many like spearheads going out at the same time and then creating kind of a wave. Um, but I mean, there's still possibility. So um, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, that's something, of course, that uh, um, artists can keep in mind now that uh, there are so many different ways also. Like, there used to be this very, you know, very strict pipeline of how you go from, you know, from not successful to being successful. And you had to go through certain channels to get there. You often had to have a certain sound. And we've discussed this a lot. We have a podcast called Better Independent where we kind of interview a lot of people from the industry. And there we've discussed quite a lot, you know, how the industry is shifting quite a lot. And there are so many places that artists can now find their fans. I feel like before the industry tried to kind of fit artists into a certain category and say, oh, this is what fans like. This is what fan, like music consumers want. Well, now artists are getting more of a chance to, you know, be there and their weirdest selves and they can find their art their fans through patreon or twitch or you know all of these different things you can be a bit more you know not go the traditional routes and you can still try and find success and try to find ways to monetize your career even though it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be you know on the front cover of all of the magazines or something you know it's still still a sustainable way to to maintain a career yeah, and I just to jump in there, I think it's also, it's been a year where I've discovered so many new artists and you don't necessarily need that biggest hub anymore. You can have maybe like 200,000 listeners and you already have that like really good base of people. And I love the fact that an artist like Girl in Red can come into the scene and be like, why should I sign with a big label? I have everything around me. Um, and I think the kids today are doing that with TikTok and Instagram and kind of telling everyone that you don't necessarily need to succeed across the board. You can succeed on one platform and then still be relevant. Yeah. Anton, do you have anything to add to that? 
Uh, I totally agree. On the other hand, you also see some artists who are maybe doing really well on social media and DSPs, but like can't fill uh, a venue of 100 people because uh, there's no actual strategy to approach the German market. So I think um, just relying on um, on like streaming or social media success alone is, is often not enough, uh, especially in competitive markets like Germany. So um, that's that's where you see that having an actual strategy can help to uh, build like a longer lasting career. And what kind of strategy would you then recommend artists? What other aspects would you bring into their strategy other than just, as you say, uh, streaming platforms and uh, social media? Yeah, there's a right, wide range of things. Um, sometimes it's surprising to see uh, when you talk to people that uh, when they're surprised why maybe they don't have a big enough audience in Germany that they hope for that they actually never really approached it strategically. So they never, for example, ask uh, the label uh, of, you know, distribution. Is, is the distribution talking to, to the uh, playlist editors in the territory? Are they running campaigns? Are they running PR campaigns, marketing campaigns? Is there... Um, po are, posters being put up in the big cities that they're playing where they already have an audience maybe or uh, yeah do they have a radio campaign is the social media targeted to the territory i think there's a is a wide range of of things that that you can do one thing it's true that now that so much music is being discovered through algorithms it's a, it's gotten a bit harder to actually steer and control that but even there there's obviously ways to tackle that approach third party playlists and and all of that so um, I think there are ways um, to make sure that you don't just like have one hit on um, uh, one trend or virus song on, on social media and, and the DSPs uh, and have no live audience. Yeah. For sure. And I think that's something that artists need to really be aware of. I know this is something that was mentioned in the keynote before, but I really want to hammer that home. Uh, this is a lot what we do here at Better Things is, you know, getting you know, getting to those radio stations, getting to those local stations, even when you're starting out, trying to get into the, you know, college radio stations. And of course, before uh, when the world uh, changed, then it was a big, a lot about getting, you know, into those radio stations, even pitching interviews to radio stations, ticket raffles can make a huge difference. You know, they'll bring you on, you say, you know, three sentences, say, hey guys, yes, we're here, this is great, you know, come to our show tonight. And that can make a huge difference. And it's just a question of having the wherewithal and the forethought to do this uh, in a timely enough manner that uh, you're not scrambling on the day of the show, realizing you've only sold, sold 11 tickets in pre-sales or something like this. Um, Sylvie, do you, can you maybe give us a little tip of you know common mistakes that you uh, see artists do or something that you just wish people would stop doing? <laughs> when it comes to approaching press in Germany? Um, yeah, well, like I said before, it's uh, always a good thing to keep your stuff short. Also, it's never wrong to remind someone that you send an email or maybe even write again and invite them to your show or whatever. It's not, not a bad idea. Um, also, what I think maybe that's a bit broader, not just on journalism, I think that uh, people should not be... Um, and this is maybe a bit personal, but I think like, uh, because I think Karen uh, said before, like there's so much so much social media going on, like TikTok and stuff, and you can approach that and try to get big there. But I don't think that everyone should, must have the feeling that you have to happen on every social media platform there is because you will go crazy. And it's, it's a mental health question, but also like not everyone is everywhere and you don't need to be like the first one to be big on, on on TikTok or whatever you can still like do it in your own pace and don't like do everything at the same time and also i think um um a good strategy what Anton already said is really important i think that you, you can see sometimes i i see artists when i see them at the beginning and i think like wow they're, they're really great they're so good they're going to be huge and then you just see them like do things and you're like what are they doing? Why are they doing it like that? Why don't they like talk to anyone and maybe like try to find out and talk to experts, talk to people that actually know their stuff. So that's, and, and then, then you just like see them disappear and you're like, okay, great. That sucks. But yeah, um, something like that maybe sometimes, sometimes it's better to maybe just like do less and do it good and not do everything at once. 
quality over quantity, as yes. they say. Right. Yeah, this is something that we have definitely, because uh, I teach quite a lot of workshops on this. Uh, of course, they're all been online this year. Um, but this is exactly one of the things that people have realized. A lot of artists are very scared with the follow-up. And this is something that, you know, it's it's important for artists to be aware of that, you know, uh, as you said, Sylvie, like our bloggers and music journalists are looking for, um, like they're, they're looking for artists, but they are also getting a lot of things in. So just having a friendly follow-up of saying, hey, did you see my message? Or, hey, I sent you something about my single, now my EP is coming out or something. This is very often, um, and this was in this journalist, journalism panel we did, the other day, that was also specifically all of the journalists said, please, please send me follow-ups. You were all agreeing because, you know, things do get lost. Things do fall between the cracks. Um, so that is my my tip also for the artists that are, are listening. Um, we're going to start opening things up for questions soon. So uh, I'd love to get some in the uh, chat if people are looking. Um, I'm just wondering um anton when you are working with the artists that you're working with are they mostly local or are they from outside of, of germany well they uh they come from from uh, all over but most of them uh live and work in berlin yeah yeah and is this something that you feel i'm just wondering you know when uh, um if you really want to tackle Germany as a market, is this something that you think is easy to do when you're not based here? Of course, let's think that uh, things are back to normal sometime late, sometime next year and there's, there's a positive, uh, potential of touring. Or would you recommend artists who really want to make it in the Germany industry to really move here? Um, I think it really depends. Uh, for me, working with local artists is more of a personal decision. Um, but uh, I think... Um, there's a lot of people who are successful um, in Germany being based somewhere else. I, of course, know that I know some people, for example, from Iceland, who like when they want to make it, uh, make it in Germany, they, they move here because otherwise travel costs would just be way too complicated. Or, um, and then they like are based here for a bit and then use this as kind of a base, even to tour the rest of Europe. That obviously helps instead of like having to fly back uh, all the time. But I think um, if you if you really want to focus on Germany as your main market, then then maybe it makes sense. If you want to play all of Europe, then I think you don't have to like actually be here. Mm -hmm. But coming here regularly is is important, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something we've all realized with uh, in twenty twenty that the power of a face to face <laughs> meeting and. Uh, and how much also, how small, you know, the music industry in a way is. And uh, as soon as you get your foot in, that's always my tip to all artists. And of course, I mean, this is all very outdated information right now, but, you know, make sure to go to things like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure to go to a lot of these, you know, industry events, shakes, you know, shake some hands. I don't know if we'll be able to do that in the future, <laughs> you know, uh, but some elbows. And uh, because as soon as you start getting to know some people, um, that, that you will it will very quickly open up. I come from, as I said, from Iceland, and it is such a tiny nation. But I was very surprised getting into the music industry here how actually small it is and uh, how easy it is to, you know, get to know people and really really start to grow your network. Um, maybe if we uh, add a question, um, when artists uh, are we're looking to you know tackle Germany as a market. Um, do you think it's smart that they specifically focus on certain areas? Um, maybe, um, Karen, you can say, like, does it make sense to just tackle Berlin or just this area or something? Or, you know, what, what would you recommend? It's, it's kind of a hard question because I think, again, it kind of depends on your genre. I've also heard that, like, up north, uh, certain radios play more of a certain genre than, for example, in the South. But I think if you're international, Berlin probably makes the most sense. But I think you can have just as much of a... I think you should, like Anton said earlier, have a strategy and also do some research on like where is your audience and what's your target going into the market. Um, yeah, so I don't necessarily think Berlin is the big one, but if you're doing 
if you're new to the market, it's probably a good place to come into at least. Mm. Also, I think a good example of how tricky Germany can be, for example, for my artist, it's much more rewarding to play uh, a place like Leipzig than it is to play a city like Munich. That's just for the music that we work with. And like Leipzig is not really like an industry city or like a media city necessarily. It's like a very, they just have a lot of like music fans and they have good venues, nice promoters. Whereas Munich, for example, with the music I work in is a very tough market. It's usually other people would say like, oh, it's a very important place to play. But for us, we, we sometimes don't have the audience that we have in other places that are much smaller. But that just goes to show that um, you really have to do your, your research or you have to have certain experience with the German market because it's very hard to just pin down uh, and, and yeah, have like a roadmap that works for everyone. Definitely. Sylvie, do you have anything to add? Mm, no, I, I think like I, I would totally agree to all of that. And also, like, um, I mean, this is something that also in Germany is the same, but I think in uh, the Scandinavian uh, uh, countries, it's uh, even more the whole uh, idea of uh, the state uh, trying to support you to go out and enter the market, like do the research there as well, because they have really good insights and know really good people. And they will just like maybe bring you there or get journalists or um, people from the industry uh, over there. I mean, I, I wrote a lot about um, Norwegian uh, artists and I, I all met them due to uh, some kind of get togethers that uh, was organized by uh, Music Norway or something like that. So it's also maybe a good thing to just like, go there and ask them. Definitely. And uh, I mean, we work really closely as well with uh, all of the music, music export offices and uh, I would say that the, the Nordic music exports are all, are all, they are really powerful and they know what they're doing. Um, I know that there's always, a, for many artists, there's a little bit of a hesitation to want to go through government channels, um, but they really, they, they do know what they're doing and uh, they have both amazing funding opportunities. I mean, yeah, 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 is through export offices. So that's one opportunity. Um, I mean, when uh, yeah, yeah, yeah concerts were still happening, I mean, that's, they are, a real industry event, you know, it's actually filled with people from the industry and it's uh, it's something that people take seriously and they, they do listen to these types of recommendations. So definitely wouldn't um, discount these, that's for sure. For sure, and talking about doing research on the German market, that's also something when we're talking about getting into um, radio, just so that people know if they're not completely sure um, about how uh, professionalized the radio industry uh, or the radio market is here in Berlin. That uh, basically to be able to pitch music to a radio station, you can always try, always go for it. They'll try and send an email, but most of the time you want to go through a uh, on another one of these online platforms called MPN. And, uh, and then it is uh, hard to get access to that. And then I would recommend if the only thing you want to kind of invest in uh, during if you have any kind of money to invest to do a campaign here in, in Germany and try and get on radio, I would recommend getting in touch with a PR agency and you can make a deal with them where you maybe pay three to 500 euros. Uh, and then they do just to pitch on this MPN, they make sure to pitch you to the right channels and things like that. But that, for example, um, if you have a really small budget, then that's something that I would definitely recommend. Talk to a local agency that maybe does... Um, similar music to what you do, like better things. For example, we do a lot of kind of, you know, um, indie pop um, kind of music. Um, a lot, we used to work almost exclusively with Nordic artists, but we've now moved more to just uh, all over the world. So check the roster of some PR agencies, see if they have similar, um, similar artists uh, with a similar sound as you, maybe artists that you would like to, you like to have the similar career trajectory as them get in touch, see if they can make you a deal of just pitching you to radio and then using Submit Hub to, um, you know, spending 50, 100 euro or something like that. Those are some uh, tips that I would definitely recommend. And then something that is not very popular among artists and I always think is a little bit shady, but it is the truth. And that is the thing called advertorials. And that is if you get in touch with blogs, because of course a lot of blogs aren't getting paid in any way. And, which is why Submit Hub in a way is great. At least artists, uh, the bloggers are getting paid a little bit for uh, looking at artists. 
there is a way to approach if you have a good idea especially when it comes to a feature or something about you to you know say hey i have two three hundred euros what do you say that you feature me um on your on your uh, blog or in your magazine so this is also a way if you don't have any contacts in germany and you don't know how to start getting people to write about you that this is that that is one of the few ways that you can actually buy your way in so Mikko Yakola asks here Germany seems to be wonderfully diverse in terms of genres. Do you guys listen to and like many genres yourself? Karen, are you uh, genre-specific? No, not at all. I think I listen to like 2,000 genres or something on my Spotify wrapped. Uh, I don't know how that's possible. Um, so no, not at all. I think... Uh, or me personally, I just love music. So I think if that's like a really weird techno beat or uh, German rap, I'm pretty open. But uh, usually listen mostly to international as I'm not fluent in German yet. <laughs> How about you, Sidney? Uh, yeah, I'm actually, I really, uh, I am drawn to a, a few certain kind of uh, genres and listen to them. But um, being a fan of music, uh, when I was growing up, it was really expensive. So if you had to decide at the beginning, like I listen to Nirvana, so I do grunge, so I have to like pay all my money for the t-shirts and the uh, radio, like the, the discs and stuff like that. So that, that was something that we had to do back then. And now it's so much easier to listen to everything or to just like discover new stuff. Which is really great, and I think I would, I would, um, I would say like I, as a private listener, I would always just rather go to the, to the guitar-driven side of life, which is great because in Norway there's so much music on this end. Um, but uh, as a professional writer, I would always try to listen to anything that comes out on Fridays, like try to get all on with the new music Friday stuff, and see what's being released, see what's trending, so just that I know what I'm talking about a bit better. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And Anton? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you listen to the roster of my label, you, you it, there is definitely some similarities uh, there in the music that I put out. But personally, I try to listen to as much uh, different kind of styles that I can. Um, and that's actually one thing where I'm always a bit worried about a world that's more and more algorithm driven because algorithm it's all about expectations so um I, I i do listen to the algorithmic playlists but um a lot of times they are very predictable they know what i like and i like it and mm -hmm. that's why i really try and go out and challenge myself i think a great way is to listen for example a place like nts radio that um has just so many different shows and there i just try to really um broaden my horizons a bit more so yeah yeah that's something also that's quite special about germany i would say is that there's the majority of radio here is more age specific rather than genre specific it's uh it's not you know sometimes when we're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by life here in the office we just listen to buy your lines <laughs> because it's really nice background music and it's everything from modern stuff to back to the 80s and it's kind of like it's just you know it's like karaoke top hits and then some, all of a sudden some random song that you hear. Um, so that was definitely um, something, yeah, that is a little bit stranger here. Um, yeah, if I, if I answer the question, I would definitely agree with you, Sylvia. I would always go for a more guitar driven thing, but I was specific. I was surprised because we just got the Spotify wrapped up and uh, my top artist, there was a, uh, Billie Eilish, Beyonce, a country artist and a folk artist. So there was Tom Svensson and then First Aid Kid. And I was like, this year has not been very normal. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I think uh, uh, just as you were saying um, about how it's, uh, Sylvia, about how it's easier to jump between genres today. I think that's. I also I also just recently read this article, just maybe as a tip to Anton, you can really like try to mix things up when you, just um, listen to really different stuff on, for example, on Spotify. So the algorithm will be really a um, bit drunk. So maybe it will just like give you something else to listen to. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to mess with algorithms. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vanessa Eriksson asks, do German fans listen a lot more uh, to music from Germany than abroad? Um, 
what you, we were just said earlier that it is getting more and more localized. But um, Karen, what do you feel like is the uh, is the uh, ratio? I think a challenge I've seen just trying to break uh, international artists in this market or in the German market is that it is a bit more closed. Maybe it's either domestic artists or really, really big export acts coming in from the US. So I think for indie music, it's sometimes harder. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I think that German fans listen a bit more to what's kind of being served to them um, than, than take risks outside and pick up something early. That's just a feeling I have. I think maybe it's different in electronic music, but yeah, that's just the feeling I get. What do you think, Anton? Yeah, I, I think um, just uh, adding to that uh, actually just shows that for a lot of bands or acts, it just makes sense to look at the big picture, not just focus on, on one market, because Germany also is a market that still does look to what's successful in, in other countries. Um, and this makes it obviously easier for bands to get an audience over here. So don't forget maybe about the, the UK or other places. Um, I know for some bands it works to just be, I mean, there are acts that are just successful in Germany and in maybe their home country. But uh, if you look at the international acts that are successful in Germany, they obviously are successful because they are, they have a big audience uh, outside of Germany as well. Yeah, I mean, Drake has a huge audience in, uh, in Germany because Drake is huge everywhere. <laughs> exactly, yeah. For sure. Uh, we'd love to get some more questions if you have them, so go right ahead. We have eight more minutes. Is there maybe anything uh, you guys would want to say that we haven't touched on that you want to give us a, a tip for an artist who's looking to break into the German market? Again, mm -hmm. just, just yeah. talk to your team. Actually, get your team in line. Tell them, hey, I want to be more successful in Germany, what can you do? Talk to uh, talk to your booking team. Do they have a sub-agent in Germany? Talk to distribution. Are they specifically talking to the DSP people in Germany? Talk to your publisher. Are they talking to their sub-publishers, to their partners in Germany? There's so many different steps that you can take. Some people just forget about it and they think just automatically happens. You enter every market equally. But I think you actually got to work for it. Are being uh, budget, social media budget, budgets, are they targeted to Germany uh, and all this stuff? Uh, yeah. And also, I think it's just important that, yeah, again, to do a little research on like what's actually working in this market. I think especially me, who's like a big bedroom pop fan, find it quite challenging um, being in Germany because that like that genre isn't really there yet. So I think just I agree. Yeah. Kind of being like a bit realistic about what's working here and not I sometimes get people uh that send me music and they're like, I think this would be huge in Germany. And then I'm like, but have you really listened um to what's being played here? Um yeah, so I think just research is your best friend. Definitely. Sylvie, do you have anything to say on that? Yeah, I, I would I would totally agree. Like be, be realistic approach also be, be realistic with who you approach on, on the journalist side of things or the magazine side of things. Like just like I mean, this is really uh, of course like but a death metal magazine wouldn't write about bedroom pop for example but <laughs> you, you you can tell it dial it down into certain other other things as well and, and it's so easy to to approach people or just like maybe just follow them on instagram and see what they do or what they write about or what they share maybe and just like start talking to them and it's not a big deal Definitely, and I mean, if I can shame, if I can uh, shamelessly plug myself, then uh, this is something we at Better Independent do offer. You know, consultations. Of course, there's many other companies that do something similar, but uh, you know, going up to even a label, uh, talk if, if you are an independent artist or if you don't have a label yet, going up to a company that offers label services, and you know, even just, you know, if there's a label that you really like but you they don't want to sign you, maybe you 
they would be down to sit down with you for, you know, have a Zoom call for an hour where you ask specific questions. Same with PR agencies, you know, it's, um, people are very willing to give out information. You just have to ask for it, but also you need to know which questions to ask. I feel like this is a consummate problem uh, when I talk to artists is I very often have artists around me say like, yeah, I just really need to get signed. And you go like, okay, why? It's like, I don't know, I just need, I just like, for success, I need to get a label, I just need, and you're like, yes, but why specifically? Or saying like, I want a manager, or I want this or this. You kind of, it's really good for you as an artist to break it down a little bit and say, okay, like I need help with my, you know, um, I don't have a big enough network or I don't have the money to record properly or I need help booking shows. You know, as soon as you kind of identify a lot of the places where you feel like you're lacking, you much, you know, that if your main problem is you don't have any success on social media and you're just, no one wants to write about you, then, you know, you might want to then talk to someone who does that specifically and you can address that problem rather than just saying, I don't have any success. I don't know what to do. And do, you know, and if the, if your problem's too general, you can't find specific solutions either. And one thing that I also just remembered, I think a main strategy now, especially for developing new artists, is uh, are obviously collaborations. So if you're really serious about a, a certain market, maybe think about collaborating with with local musicians. So. Uh, yeah, this is something that uh, I really like to recommend also to hip hop artists because there's more of a culture for that there. Um, I recently worked with a Swedish hip hop artist, and uh, and that was one of the things that was being recommended is to uh, to try and find some local collaborators in the same similar genre. Uh, because especially if you're both kind of just starting out, then uh, this is something that uh, you could boost each other's audiences, you know, or boost each other's listeners. And I also think it's quite rare to kind of hear German rap, for example, outside the country, which isn't doesn't make sense to me because it's great. Um, and I think a great example of someone who just did a collaboration like that was Amanda Delara, who did a track with Loredana, and it blew up. And like that's a really great step for her career. So I think, or for both artists. So I think it's we don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to uh, stop because of the language barrier. I think there's so many opportunities now. Yeah, for sure. So any last questions? We have uh, just under three minutes. <laughs> Let's see if something comes in. No, or it's, oh, there's Francine. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, there's one last question from Miko. Sorry, I'll let you finish it with that. <laughs> Is it now easier to break niche artists than say five years ago? Does anyone want to grab that question? Boom. I said yeah. I'd say yes, but I don't know if that's correct in every genre. But I sometimes find it easier to like uh, we said earlier about focusing, uh, doing well on a small scale instead of doing well everywhere. I guess it's just a bigger competition sometimes um, if you are a female pop singer, then it's, I mean, then you're competing with the big ones. And I think niche is a cool way to kind of find your little lane. Great. Yeah, it, this is also what I like about uh, Berlin. It's such a big city with such a big audience that I think it's a great place for niche music. Uh, I don't think I could be doing what I'm doing in any other place in Germany. So um, I think it's definitely uh, worth giving a shot to like play or kind of be present in Berlin with like whatever kind of music you have. For sure. I mean, there's always that. That's always the the uh, push pull of a big city is that you know market is quite oversaturated. But then again, there's a place for everything. <laughs> so it's uh, it's always uh, there's a, a up and a downside. So yeah, I think we'll just say fantastic. Thank you guys uh, so much. Um, thank you, Francine, for inviting us here. I hope this was useful. Thank you, Miko and Vanessa, for asking questions. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. That was really, really helpful. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing so much detail and so many tips and such good advice. Um, so that's, that's that. That's our last panel of the conference. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to you all for joining us today, 
to the rest of our panelists for joining, to our keynote speakers and to everybody that took the time out of their very busy schedules to come and take part and to listen in, ask questions, get involved. It's been really brilliant to have you all with us. Um, we will make all of the content that has been shared available next week. So if you registered to the platform, which if you're hearing me now, you definitely did, um, you'll get an email next week with links to all of the videos. Um, we will be bringing the Ya 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 shows back as soon as we are able to, safely able to host the shows. Um, so we really hope to see you at one of those in the very, very near future. And in the meantime, seeing as we can't have the show and we can't have a Christmas party, um, we've got a little session room called the Ya 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 Bar. So we'd really like to invite you to just what I'm not sure what the time zone is that you're in. It's half past three here, but I'm going to have a glass of wine. <laughs> so please grab a drink, um, come and join us, just have a chat with people, meet some new, meet some new folks. And the last thing that I will say is that this platform will be live for the next three hours or so. So if there's any panels that you missed or if there's anything that you want to catch up on, you can go to the expo section of this site, which is on the left hand side. And I've been uploading all of the panels and all of the videos as we've been going along. So you can catch up with anything that you might have missed in that section. So please do take this time to do so. So thank you very much again, everybody. And uh, see you, you in the bar. Thank you. See you.